Pittsburgh hung around the fringes of contention in 2019 until a 2 and 18 swoon in late July ended their hopes for good. The Pirates now enter 2020 looking for more of everything. More depth, more stability, more pitching. While Pittsburgh will struggle to move up in the standings, if they can find a few more W's, it will be a sign that things are moving in the right direction and better days may not be too far off. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my MLB 20 of the show, Pittsburgh Pirates franchise, episode number one here on the Boss King Returns YouTube channel. Um, yeah, this year, uh, well, I guess this is a weird time to start a franchise. I just felt like doing it. Um, yeah, you might be wondering why the Pirates. I don't know. Just felt like playing as the Pirates because they're hot dog shit. And, you know, sounds like fun. That <laughs> is. Let's get going. All right, so in this, um, yeah, you, you might see that we're forced trades and ignore budgets. That's I'm not going to be abusing that. That's more just so I can like mess, like because I I don't trust the game, the in-game trades. So that's why we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing all of the trades it's because I know what makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm just checking this. Yeah, the only things that I don't do. Because uh, I don't like scouting, so it's kind of tedious. Um, yeah, as you can see, all the CPU teams, uh, they're all auto. Now, their trade is auto, but I have the trade slider, slider to, to its minimum. So I will be the one doing the trades. And let's get over here to Pittsburgh. And, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to take a slight cut, and we'll be back. Okay, before we jump into any, like, Look through the roster, sim this spring. I'm going to sign free agent starting pitcher Mike Fultonavich, who was let go by the Braves in real life and thought he signed somewhere else, but I guess he hasn't. So I guess we're going to, I'm going to pick him up. This team is desperately in need of, of anybody to throw innings, and Fulte can throw innings, so yeah. Uh, we're going to sign him. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so. Um. I guess we're gonna go to look through the roster. Um, okay. So now, okay. So I'm just gonna cut to a list of players that we're going to go through one by one. Or, no, we're just gonna cut to the player card of every player. We go through a lot one by one, and then we will wrap this thing up with some lineups and and our pitching staff. And that'll be it for this episode. Next episode, we will have opening day. Okay, so first up on our list of players is Brian Reynolds. And I, I I truly do believe he will be the face of the franchise. Amazing power hitter. Really good plate skills. Vision, discipline, and clutch. This is a custom roster that I created. I did not... Uh, there are a bunch of players who are not, like... not Who do not have 99s in the base game that do in this. It, it's just, I think that... I. It's I rate these players highly, so I get so I upgrade them. So Brian Reynolds is one of those. <laughs> okay, yeah. But yeah, the, 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 uh, the, he's probably the face of the reason. Next on the docket is Josh Bell, and coming off a really strong 2019, real life 2020 didn't go so well, but I. I I don't think he's part of my future plans. I will probably deal him as long as well as another guy who's coming up. But yeah, these he's a really strong player. Probably could fetch a really good return if he plays well. If he doesn't, well then he could just be dead weight. We'll see. Up next we have Jameson Tayo. And he now he's injured for the 2020 season. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. I'm high on him, but we'll only have two years left of team control, so whether I deal him in the offseason or at the trade deadline of 2021, who knows, but don't expect, he will probably pitch for us in 2021, but don't expect him to be here past July. Again, really high on him, and I'm happy he's with the Yankees, because I'm a real-life Yankee fan, so <laughs> really high on the guy, but don't expect him to stick around. Now we have one of the most disappointing players in baseball, Gregory Polanco. Damn, I used to really think this guy was going to be the next big thing back in like 2014, 2015, but he just fell to shit. 
And after the pirates gave him that extension, basically I'm just going to be trying to trade him for whatever the fuck I can get. Like, Lever, if he plays well, then maybe I maybe he plays up his value and I get a decent return. At the deadline, well, actually no, he has an extension, so if he plays poorly, probably going to be stuck with that salary. Uh, hope he plays well. Now I have one of the, weirdly one of the better hitters on this Pirates team, Colin Moran. He, he, that being said, he's still not that, that great of a hitter. Um, depending on how many years are left on his contract, and near the end of his time with us, we might try and move him. I would try and move him at the deadline in 2021, because, or 2022. No, 2020 or 2021. Um, former a or Astros farmhand, I'm pretty sure they, he was in the coal trade. Um, I don't know. Hopefully he plays well. Hopefully we can get something for him. I actually got one of my... I, 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 this is actually probably one of my favorite players on this team, even though he's not that good. Former top prospect, Cole Tucker. Um, can't imagine he's going to actually play that well, but come on, he, he looks fucking great. That, that fucking hair is just top-notch. Uh, I've spent more time talking about the man's hair than his actual playing abilities. I should probably show you how high I am on Cole Tucker's ability. So, yeah. Just just, just felt like mentioning him for his hair more than anything. Now for one of the more underrated players in baseball. Second baseman Adam Frazier. Um, a big Frazier guy. See, did Clint Frazier on the Yankees, Todd Frazier on the... I guess he's on the Pirates now. <laughs> and, um... Adam Frazier, I love all three of these players. Um, Adam Frazier, I actually think, is one of the more underrated players in baseball. He, he He's a pretty solid contact hitter, even the limited power, but but I don't know. I, I've always been, I'm always, I've always been high on guys with really good bat-to-ball skills, so hopefully we can, hopefully we can trade him for something. Hopefully, play, yeah, I've been, I've been saying this a lot. Hopefully he plays well so I can trade him. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's just how this rebuild's going. Okay, and now it's time to talk about free agent acquisition Mike Fultonavich. Um Yeah, I, I basically just signed him to eat innings. There's not much to say about him. I think he can bounce back, but uh, had a pretty awful spring training because we simmed through it. I, I simmed through it. Um, well, well, it was cut away. Yeah, he had like an 80 ERA during spring training. So not a great start. <laughs> Hopefully he does something. Now for a guy who will most likely we will never see in this franchise. Chris Archer underwent Tommy John out for the season. What a fucking F. And I'm not bringing him back. So... <laughs> just, just gotta make that fucking Chris Archer and, and Tyler Glasnow trade even worse, don't we? <laughs> Rip. <laughs> now right-handed pitcher Joe Musgrove. Um, yeah, he's a pretty good starter. Solid. Definitely, so definitely a luxury. 27. Pretty sure near the end of his arbitration years. Well, no, we have three more years of team control, but the, he, he's not going to get us to the World Series. The, the, this core is not getting to the World Series. It's, he, he's getting sold off. <laughs> if he pitches well. If he pitches like shit, well, then I guess we're going to have to keep him. Next up, 27-year-old uh, right-handed pitcher, Trevor Williams, basically in the same boat as um, Joe Musgrove. If he pitches well, we're trading him. If he doesn't, um, I don't know. Definitely not going to non-tender him like the Pirates did in real life, because then he wouldn't get anything back. <laughs> so, yeah. And now for the last non-prospect person we're talking about left-handed pitcher Steven Brault I don't know I did like he's not that good but I'm really but I really like the guy uh, you know he's on Chris Rose rotation so um and he had a pretty good 2020 in real life so yeah just gotta just gotta mention Steven Brault and his four years of arbitration if he pitches well gets the first flight out of town that's that, that's all that's all I'm saying <laughs> And now, top prospect and guy who was, he, he isn't real, but he, he was like a, 
It was like a first round draft pick in an old franchise, in an old Pirates franchise. I'm like MLB 17 the show, and ever since I've kept him in every in every OSFM roster that I've edited since. So um, yeah, 18 year old, 79 overall, Kenji Aoki from Japan. The guy will be an absolute stud and is one of the pieces that we, we're going to build around if we're going to do things in the future. So yeah, I cannot wait for some Aoki bombs and some excellent defense and center so oh, that's gonna be fun now right-handed starter mitch keller the guys had some big league service time but uh, i don't like i'm not entirely like he's still a prospect but i'm not entirely sold on him he gives up too many hits his primary tool is striking out people out like it, it, his walks is fine but that hits per nine is just awful not really a lot of starter level stamina. I he could be a bullpen piece, but I don't see him being a starting pitcher going forwards unless he impresses me in the first couple of years. So that's probably our fourth or fifth prospect, Mitch Killer. Now for number two prospect, Brian Hayes. This guy is going to be an absolute stud. In 2020, in real life, we saw him absolutely rake. At the end of the shortened season, the guy, his father, he's the son of a former big leaguer Charlie Hayes, third baseman of the future, and there's absolutely no fucking way I'm letting anybody him slip away from this team. He's the new Andrew McCutcheon, and this and this time he's actually going to lead us to the World Series. Again, number two prospect Brian Hayes, and now time for number. I think this is the third best prospect in the pirate system. O'Neill Cruz. Now, he's had some issues in real life. I'm pretty sure he ended up getting somebody killed in a drunk driving incident. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about the details. Anyways, it, none of it matters. He's in the game at the very least. I, I'm going to rely on a big for some to, to try and be that shortstop coming up, hopefully outplaying Cole Tucker. And our next prospect who is coming right up uh again this is no o'neill cruz number three number three or four prospect in the pirate system and i'm not entirely sure who's ranked higher him or Sw uh the next guy is swaggerty but uh the next guy is nick gonzalez a shortstop prospect i i'm not entirely high because he seems like a glove first guy and he's 21 but he, he could be a very solid big league player. A lot of speed, de de good defense. He just needs to develop a bat, and I'm not sure, and I'm not entirely... I don't love it when players are, the, when, the, when the tool they're lacking is the, is the hitting tool, so... It's Nick Cruz, top five prospect. One of our top five prospects. Um, yeah. And now the last prospect that I'm going to spotlight, Travis Swaggerty. Very similar position to Gonzalez, except he's lower overall, even worse hitting tool, and he's older. So, yeah, I'm really, I, I don't, I'm not that much of a Travis Swaggerty fan. I, like if, he, like if he does something, that's great for him, but I, I don't think we're going to. I don't think he's the guy. I don't think he's the uh, center fielder of the future. Well, even if he was, he'd be a corner outfielder because Ioki's the center fielder of the future. So let's, let's just hope that he can develop some some sort of a bat. All right, and here's the lineup versus righties: Reynolds, Bell, Moran, Frazier, Polanco, um, Gonzalez, Stallings, Dyson, Colt, Tucker. With a four-man bench, and I should probably mention, I I, I put the DH in both leagues because I just can't be bothered to fuck. I hate National League Baseball with a passion. <laughs> just just pitchers should never be within a mile of a bat. That's all I'm gonna say. And here's the lineup versus left-handers: Reynolds, Moran, Bell, Frazier, Polanco, uh, Jose Ozuna. Stallings, Dyson, Colt, Tucker. I, just basically, I just moved Bell down because he's not a good against lefties. I moved up Moran, he's slightly better. Reynolds is still the OBP god. 
Cole Tucker ninth because I see him as kind of like a second leadoff hitter and like I like I like, that's where I think your that's where I think your second best OVP person should be in batting ninth. That's why I think the Yankees need to put Hicks ninth, DJ LeMahieu first. Um, yeah, that might just be. I don't know. The lineup debates on Yankee Twitter can get fucking heated. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna run through some of the free agents and free agency signings and some other free. Basically, those are just the free agents. There were no trades this spring. Just here, the, here are the free agents that signed that signed during spring training. And um, yeah, on to the. Uh, if you if you wanted to see any pause. And with that done, that is it for this episode of the MLB 20 The Show, Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, next time, we will be playing opening day. Joe Musgrove versus Charlie Morton at the Trop in Tampa Bay. So we will be taking on the Rays. If you like this episode, like, comment, subscribe. This has been The Boss King Returns. Signing out. Peace, folks.